Okay, welcome to the weekly charting analysis webinar with myself, Jasper Lawler. Got the risk warning on the screen here, just cruising through that, and then we'll kick things off. So if you've been trading today, you'll know that we've had quite a big reversal in equities. We were a decent amount higher, notably in the, the Germany 30, you know, our, our product for the German DAX. Um, that was that was up quite sizably. It's, um, it's tanking now. Um, we can see the, the state of the reversal here. <coughs> Technically, you can see it's actually pretty pretty sound what's taking place. So. This was when we first broke the uh, the daily low to uh, to basically potentially have broken the uptrend as it happened. We did go up and retest this this trend line here, and we're we're basically down trending at the moment. And all we've seen is that um, prices came off last week's lows, hit that swing low point from the um, from the ninth, and have just rolled over in the last hour or two. It's um, as I've mentioned in the chart forum here, without getting too, well, I suppose I'm getting pretty technical straight off the bat, but just to sort of talk about this equity decline and what it potentially means, is that we are actually at our third, if not fourth now, attempt into oversold territory on the Germany 30, and we are running into the 10-200 potential support here from the, um, from the, uh, the peak here back in October. So... You know, never a great idea to, to fight the trend. We're downtrending at the moment, but uh, nonetheless, there's a confluence of a couple of things here to suggest that maybe, maybe the markets can pick up in and around this 10-200 level. So, you know, if you are short from up here, just be cautious going into these lows. Um, you know, the momentum is to the downside, so uh, you know, probabilities say that this will probably break, but just a couple of um, a couple of indications maybe with it, that this downturn could actually slow down a bit, which would, you know, which would to some extent make sense because are we really going to sell off massively before the Fed announcement, before we even know what they do? doesn't necessarily make sense. We kind of need the information first. Mm -hmm. To explain some of the declines in equities, we only have to look as far as uh, the oil market. We were actually higher in, um, I think we were higher in WTI earlier on. Uh, there was a bit of divergence between Brent and WTI early on. One was higher, one was lower, both distinctly lower now. And uh, obviously, our, the prices that I tend to follow and that most of our traders use are the cash products for the futures. So, you know, this has uh, slightly altered the past pricing. So when we're looking at the chart here, um, you know, this is not to the dollar the um, the 2008 low, but what you can basically see, I didn't actually mean to put print uh, WTI is what I've been looking at more specifically. Um, over on this monthly chart, you know, we're basically below the 2008 low now, and um, by all by all readings, even looking at futures, we're below $35 per barrel. So that was that was a big question mark. You know, earlier in the year when we were at 60, and um, the question was, could we take out the the 2008 low, and uh, we have. So the possibility at this point is that we see a bit of a technical rebound at these old lows, but you can't fight the fact that the market's incredibly bearish right now, and it's probably not massively wise to fight this clearly downtrend in oil. This is the um, this is the short-term chart. So this is that. So just explaining that line up there. This was the sort of sideways market that we were dealing with for a good part of this year. Then as of November, we broke down there before the, uh, before the OPEC meeting and um, then came back, tried to retest that line, barely even got there. I think we just about tested that low, not even. And we've rolled over pretty hard since into a fresh downtrend. So when you were looking at that four-hour chart, that's that's our kind of marker point up there for um, for what uh, changed the direction of the trend, and then probably when we, you know, if and when we start coming back up, for the time being, 
it's going to be sort of around here at 41.20 for me, or more clearly at 42.30-ish, which is going to be the sort of breaking point for the downtrend. But as you can see, we're, we're far away from that at this point. So depending on your trading strategies, if you're buying at deep value, um, buying it oversold, then you know we're pretty heavily oversold right now. But as you can see from the decline last year, um, sorry, from the you know from the, the early part of this year, you know we can stay oversold for a long period of time. So what, what's what's driving it? Um, you know, there, there's. It's it's really still the backdrop of just the the, the last OPEC meeting. Um, you know, they they basically don't have a quota at OPEC anymore. OPEC's basically completely ineffectual, and um, you know, as you can see from that rally that we just pulled up, basically every every rally is being sold into, and there's no particular justification for for buying oil at the moment. The, the worry is, and why equities come down with oil at the moment, is that it just means it, it could be a sign of uh, slower global demand, which is obviously not great for the world economy, and we need the economy to, to be ticking along for, for companies to be doing well and stock markets to do well. <clears throat> so that's kind of focusing on today's action, but um, obviously the big one this week is the, the Federal Reserve. Their meetings on Wednesday evening. It's going to be after the close of European markets on Wednesday. Um, so really the action in Europe is going to take place on Thursday, but obviously when we're talking about FX and gold, you know, uh, if you want to be trading in and around the decision, it's going to be about 7 p.m. Uh, UK time, and those markets will be live and, and reacting to, um, firstly, the announcement, and then secondly, to the statement, and then thirdly, to Janet Yellen's press conference. So I mentioned in the, in the morning note today, sort of depends where you sit on this, because um, if you believe that the market, you know, every, according to Fed's fund futures, it's over 80% chance now that the, uh, the Fed's going to hike this week on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. So if you believe that markets are priced to in, uh, then the decision itself shouldn't be what moves markets on the day. It should actually be the slightly less known bits about how the Fed are going to communicate what they're going to do going forward and how how strongly they view the economy. I think the default assumption is that they sound pretty pretty hawkish and they sort of insinuate a steep rise in rates after this first one, then uh, the markets would probably sell off pretty pretty quickly. I think what people are looking for is a dovish hike whereby <coughs> whereby they basically signal that there's not one and done, but it's going to be a very slow pace of, of, of rate rises and maybe highlight some of the issues in the market. So, I mean, this is the dollar index. So that's the daily chart. But I can see it a bit more easily on the weekly chart. We've sold off in the last couple of weeks. That was, this basically started with the, uh, with the ECB meeting where uh, the ECB disappointed my level of stem uh, and their level of stimulus, and uh, the euro rallied, and uh, the dollar sold off. The euro is its largest component of the dollar index. So that the sort of the dollar is down a bit, but you know, obviously, a rate hike in itself, especially when pretty much every other central bank out there is is looking to ease policy. And the Bank of England seem quite a way away from um, from raising rates, even though they're leaning towards a rate hike. They're one of the few that are. Um, so the Fed are right out there in themselves. So the dollar's down a bit. So, you know, if they are hiking and if we were going purely off the decision itself, that would be, you know, maybe a buying and a dip opportunity. But it's uh, the unknown bit is is quite how they're going to communicate it. And at the end of the day, inflation's low. All prices are um, heading lower, which means inflation could be suppressed for a, a longer period. And uh, the manufacturing is in a borderline recession in the U.S. at the moment. And so there's a, it's not the strongest economy to be doing a, a rate hike. Um, you know, it's arguably a bit late in the economic cycle to be doing the rate hike. What a lot of people are saying is it's going to be very shallow this time around, where the kind of equivalent to the rate hike this time was when they tapered quantitative easing. That was the first tightening. 
Now this rate hike is just a little shallow bit towards the end of the cycle. So slightly different from usual, where actually usually the first rate hike is a sign that the economy is going great guns, and we've got a couple of years left of, of strong markets. That's not quite the case this time. It could be the, the signal of the end, which partly explains why we're selling off a lot today. Now, um, economic data-wise, not much today. <coughs> excuse me. We have, um, <coughs> excuse me. We have Draghi speaking today. But um, excuse me, frog in the throat. <laughs> but not much else. And so, really, probably we're looking towards uh, tomorrow when we have uh, CPI from uh, from the UK, and then um, and then more importantly, probably the last thing, if anything that could actually derail a Fed rate hike is U.S. CPI. Uh, we've also got German ZDW. So actually quite a few, uh, you know, today's a bit of an exception, but um, the rest of the week's quite jam-packed with economic data. That's just because next week it's going to be fairly dead as we head into Christmas. And so they've, they've crammed all the data in towards this week. Um, so the expectation is that CPI month over month is flat. Um, the the thing is with the Fed is that they don't really they don't focus in on core CPI. That's not their target inflation number, but obviously it's widely watched. Uh, but the, the, what makes the Fed different from other central banks is they focus on core prices, and um, core prices obviously strip out the effect of oil for the most part, apart from those sort of secondary effects. So CPI year over year. It's expected to be in around 1.9. So that's um, uh, you know that that's actually quite reasonable and maybe enough for them to justify hiking rates. Um, the worry is that obviously that oil prices drag down the headline rate and do start to tug on the CPI, and so they maybe they hike rates and inflation starts to drop into the first half of next year which would not be the greatest timing, and markets would view it as a policy error. And uh, you know that that could mean you know quite a lot of risk risk off market performance. So CPI we definitely want to watch um, tomorrow. Uh, so, yeah, on, to, uh, on tomorrow, and then it's, it's basically PMIs of the order of the day on Wednesday, as well as average earnings and unemployment data from the UK. Uh, on Wednesday, and we've got so the European CPI data as well, which is expected to remain flat, still outside of the deflation territory, and uh, that single number itself goes a long way to explain why the ECB did disappoint a couple of weeks ago. Um, when they first did, when they did their first stimulus, it was minus 0.6. Um, uh, you know, as they added to stimulus in their December meeting, it was plus 0.1. So just not as desperate a situation in, in deflation that they need to fight. Still obviously low, but mostly caused by low oil prices and not as low as it's been. And then obviously we've just got the Fed statement uh, later on Wednesday. And we've got UK retail sales, German ISO Thursday morning. We've got the Philly Fed manufacturing index on Thursday, which is um, quite apt because we could see disappointment there, um, and uh, it would raise further questions over whether the rate hike, if indeed it does take place, uh, was the right decision. And then we actually have the Bank of Japan at the tail end of the week on um, Friday, early Friday morning, we'll have the, uh, the press conference. And that's it, that's pretty much it done for the week. So it's all centering in on, on Wednesday, obviously. So let's, um, we looked at the German DAX. Let's um, let's look at some of the other indices here. So, daily chart for the uh, the UK 100, as you can see, pretty much no trend here. You know that's that's what we can call this this area here is just pure consolidation. If we zoom out to the weekly chart, we can kind of get a little bit of context on this. <clears throat> so, you know here rising trend potentially. Broken trend line retest, potentially timber down to 5,000 and below, perhaps. 
you know, that's that's the kind of gravity of what we're potentially dealing with at the moment is a um, a major downtrend ensuing in the UK 100. But obviously, if we hold above those lows, that's not the case. It's just a consolidation. That's where we are at the moment. Now, on the shorter term, it distinctly is a trend. Mm -hmm. And uh, these are the lows that we've been taking out. What, what first drew our attention to getting on the um, shorter side of the market was where I've got this X here. You know, you can even draw in a line and just sort of say, you know, that, that low. And then again, we've got a bit of a bounce from there, had a couple of days above it, and then dropped through. That's, that's where this, this up, hopes of this uptrend pushing us up into a Santa rally faded pretty quick. And now we're in, um, you know, we're in a bit of a sledge crash. So that was the turning point, and now we're running down in towards these um, these kind of critical levels. So this was, you know, this could cause a bounce because we had two levels of uh, two lows here that helped this uh, five eight seven five ish um, form a pot potential support. But really, the critical one is down here at that August low because that that's what will tell us if we're if we're tipping lower again. At the moment, it's, it's a range-bound environment. Yes, the, it's, it's aggressively a downtrend in the short term, and for short-term trades, you know, if you're sticking with the trend, you're basically you're looking for sales right now. But um, as we head into these two areas, there's definitely scope for uh, for a rebound, and you know that that lines up with what we were seeing in the in the Germany 30. Potentially a bit oversold right now within a sort of range environment. So we haven't actually had a decent test of this. Um, you know, so if we do get back up to the um, this uh, six six fifty level, potentially that's an area that the downtrend could resume. It really sort of depends on whether we've got down to one of these support levels first. That would increase the chance of actually breaking above here. But if even from from above those kind of levels, we get another little push higher. Potentially that's an area to, to sell into. But it already looks like. We have a bit of a kind of reversal candlestick into this 6,000 level, which is obviously the big psychological level that um, we dropped through last week. As far as U.S. markets, so this is our short-term four-hour chart. Here's the, here was the kind of distinguishing mark for me, uh, that kind of high volatile couple of days, um, which um, again was the ECB meeting and um, so you can see that kind of better on the daily chart as well as here's here we pushed higher we made a little swing low and we were looking to build up off there for a break of 18,000 but it just didn't happen and we had those couple of tricky days and had that lower close down here and that's when that um, that basically uptrend lost its lost its steam and it could have chopped around and eventually broken but as it turns out um, you know, we failed to get above that level for uh, about three days running, and then we collapsed. And uh, so, as of the moment, we're basically rolling off that that previous low pretty perfectly in a fairly sort of you know coordinated steep downtrend. You know, it's a it's a choppier downtrend when you have a, a new low and then the the peak comes up. You know, here we we failed to bounce off these old lows and we pushed up to the peak again. Now that's more of a choppy downtrend. Here is a more of a uniform kind of aggressive downtrend taking place. But again, as we head into the, this, this is, is kind of critical because if we zoom out to this um, daily chart, we can see that this is basically a pretty classic double top. So if we do close below that that um, that low from November, as I mentioned in the chart forum here, that's about 900 900 points. The, the height of this pattern, so 900 below uh, 17100 takes us down to 16200, which would be quite a quite quite a serious sell-off, and it would take us back down to those those lows from September. I think you probably all know by this point, but um, if there are any questions or particular markets you want me to have a look at, please just um, just let me know. 
So since uh, you know since the Fed is the focus, uh, well, it's, it's a tough one because FX is likely to move a good amount in and around the Fed meeting, but we are seeing some pretty steep sell-offs in commodities at the moment. Let's um let's have a look at gold. So this is how I see gold at the moment. We've got this is our um, this is our four-hour chart here. So steady downtrend, and then. On that ECB day, no, I think it was the, the no, it was the non-farm payrolls day after the ECB, where we flew higher in gold, broke the declining trend, and uh, so this was the point in which the trend broke, taking out that that hold high there. But since we've not quite been able to build on it, obviously leading to this Fed meeting, not necessarily the kind of time you'd want to own gold, and so you can see that we bounced off this 61.8 percent, the 50 percent. We got the initial bounce there. We weren't able to get through the peak. Came down again. Now we're now we're trying to rebound from the 61.8. That's not quite working out at the moment. Could still hold. You know, if you're if you're going on the assumption that this uptrend is going to continue, that this was a breakout, and that we're going to see a, a higher tre uh, you know uh, an uptrend here, and this is just a consolidation, then we you know we're getting into decent value areas. In order, to, in order to to buy on that potential move higher, but you know as you can see from this moving average, you know the trend is still pretty pretty downwards. And if you pull out to the the up uh, the um, the daily chart here, you can see that um, <clears throat> it's just, it's a steep downtrend that you're trying to trying to buy into here. So that may be all we get. You know, just a bit of a kind of um, short covering. Um, you know, following that uh, that non-farm payrolls result, um, it, gold rallying on good U.S. data is a bit of a strange one. I mean, it wasn't um, fantastic, but it was generally thought of as enough to justify the the Fed raising rates this month. Um, so maybe some explanation of this uh, rally in gold is that the the Fed are about to embark on a, on a policy error, as I mentioned before. And so, if that was the case, you'd want to have hold of some some safer assets like gold in 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 case somehow this um this policy decision worked out badly um and the economic data start continue to to disappoint after the decision and, and maybe uh maybe markets sell off even harder than they have been already we touched on oil a bit already Pull up Brent since that's the one falling the most today, and as you can see on this long-term chart, we're ramming right into these um, 2008 lows. And so, obviously, a pretty similar picture to uh, WTI, where we this was the kind of breakdown point where we had been pretty much we'd had a nice rally off the low, sideways, but then gave way here. Couldn't even retest and just rolled straight down. Pretty similar scenario, and you, you know, you, even from looking at this daily chart, you can't even see some opportunities to sell a bounce here. You have to zoom into the the, the lower charts. <clears throat> and so, be aware that this is how I uh, I have my um, 2008 low right at this 36.20 type level. According to again, according to cash prices, which doesn't quite line up to the futures price, it's been adjusted to make the chart make sense. Um, but you know, there's scope for a good, solid bounce in this area. But you know, if we don't get to that and we get a little tip up to this uh, former low first, you know, given the strength of the downtrend, you can imagine a few people might be getting on board short from that 37.23 type area. Yeah, I've noticed I've got my um, my kind of currency list scroll to the bottom here. The um, Chinese yuan is something that the market's got some focus on at the moment. This is the offshore yuan that we offer. Um, you know, the this is so CNH is in sort of the offshore traded through Hong Kong, H Hong Kong, rather than CNY, uh, which is the mainland rate, because that's basically not sort of uh, not really accessible and um, determined by the People's Bank of China every day. But as you can see, we're pushing into those those peaks from August. So, you know, 
Um, no coincidence that you know, it was the equity market crash that happened in in August as this um, dollar yuan was peaking, and we're seeing equity markets crash off again. And here we are; the dollar yuan is is rising. So this is a difficult a difficult one to trade, I would suggest. Well, technically at least, um, but. The thought process is at the moment that the you know the People's Bank they are trying to <clears throat> trying to weaken the yuan to uh, and separate the dollar uh, separate away from the dollar which they have a peg to um, in anticipation of this Fed rate hike which could mean more dollar strength. But if we get back to the majors here, this is the um, the euro situation as I see it. We've, um, you know, we're in this pretty steep downtrend in anticipation of stimulus, massive reversal, and then uh, we couldn't even get down to any of these kind of lower peaks. We basically rebounded off that peak here, and we basically we formed a couple of Harami patterns here, where the body of the candlesticks formed inside the previous day, um, and it's just sort of showing uncertainty. And so, a breakout from the top or bottom. Uh, of this consolidation area is going to tell us the direction of the next trend. Of course, it could be a fake out, but in no coincidence, really, this has taken place at the the 110 round number. And I, you know, we could get a little push up to 111 because that, to me, is a, a, a more uh, a more you know better technical support from these uh, lows in September 3rd and 23rd before the before the fed meeting but really i can't see us going too far i think the market's going to be pretty sideways um the dollar is going to be pretty sideways before the fed meeting um unless we get some sort of um you know pre pre meeting hint as to what's going to happen maybe some fed speaker says something quite overt before the meeting i don't think i don't know why they would do that so i think we're probably heading sideways and the and, and where this finally breaks is going to be discerned by the fed but um, if we do break higher, some resistance to bear in mind is that 111. And then, you know, failing that, I think, you know, because of the steepness of the sell-off, we're probably looking at just maybe this potential declining trend line, which, depending on when it happens, could line up quite well with the, that broken downtrend line. So a confluence of potential resistance up there in the sort of 112 vicinity at the moment as it stands. Yeah, I've, got, I've, went through, I've been through various upper trend lines here. Uh, this is just the most simplistic one, I think, going from this um, large peak up here and using this one. You know, you could arguably go for this, and that would explain why we're selling off here. If we had that peak, we've got a little false break there, and now we're falling away from it. But this is more the sort of clear-cut one. And um, so potentially we could... We could push higher again, and there is some confidence to support from this 200-day moving average, this declining trend line, <clears throat> and this uh, November 19th peak up in around this uh, sort of 153 to 153.30 level, as I mentioned on the chart forum there. But at the moment, what we're dealing with is a bearish engulfing candlestick with the dollar gaining strength. So. Um, Again, I don't see, I don't see a massive rally in the dollar leading into the meeting. But you know, that fundamentally, dollar strength is, is what makes sense here. And if we are anticipating a rate hike, the dollar should should kind of strengthen. But again, it just depends on what the, the Fed say in their statement and in the Yellen speech. So again, a bit of sell off here, but I'm not too sure how it, how far it can get. Maybe this is what we've got for today, and we come off these um, off these lows here. And it actually maybe maybe we, we spike down there, but maybe it ends up being another uh, harami type day in the pound. So just coming into the end of it here, have a quick look at the yen. So quite. A good technical trade for those who are able to catch this one, because we had this tight consolidation for a long period of time, three failed attempts, 
at uh, a break in higher here. We had this, just to explain that pink line. I mean, I've had it on there for a while, but you know, those new to attending, you know, it's just a simple one up through those lows, a long-term trend line showing a retest. Consolidation couldn't push back through the rising trend line again and rolled over is the kind of long-term scenario as I see it. And we broke through this floor, came back, perfectly retested, and then sunk massively down below 121. So there's some potential support from this rising trend line and these lows down in the one uh, and just the round number of 120. Uh, but we are back below the 200-day moving average now, and it could mean a sink back down to the bottom of this previous floor, which is more like sort of 118.70 I mentioned in the chart forum. These kind of level down here, if I draw a line, it's kind of just going somewhere in here. <clears throat> so, on the short term, I think we could we could potentially still have some more room to go. We're not oversold, and we've got some some large support down here around the 120 level that could attract the seller. So maybe a bit more of a sell-off to go. We've um, we've bounced into that old low, so it shows a good strong downtrend for the time being. So given that we bounced off the old low, uh, you know, not the peak, there's a good chance we'll break this low and maybe maybe run into that support down there. Okay. Um, yeah, that's, that's half an hour, so uh, thank you all for attending. Hope that was helpful. Good luck with trading this week. It's probably the biggest week of the year for markets with the uh, the Fed finally looking to, to raise rates. We'll see what happens. Uh, either way, the volatility should be good for trading. So, yeah, good luck with it. And um, I'll talk to you next Monday. But an FYI, on the 28th, there won't be any webinar. And it'll be, um, you know, we'll take a break over Christmas and we'll be back again on the Monday the 4th of January. But, yeah, anyway, talk to you next week. Jasper Lord signing out.